Hey everyone, today's project is um, going to be influenced by an artist, Stefan Koenig, who um, does something really cool, creates monsters or creatures out of coffee spills. And so the first thing that he does is um, start with coffee, spills it on his page, and then turns it into um, a really cool monster. What I'm going to do to start off is do something similar. Um, if you're going to be doing this at home, what you need to do is make sure that you have something like a paper towel nearby to make sure you can clean up any messes. And I would work somewhere like the kitchen where if you do make a spill, it's okay. And um, you can even slide your paper towel underneath your the paper that you're working on to help soak up any spills if you do make any spills. Um, so again, making sure you're working in an area where it's safe to make spills. I'm gonna start off with um, coffee for mine. You could use anything like tea or any sort of, um, you know, colorful um, liquid to be able to make your spill. And I actually don't like just pouring the spill onto the paper because it gets a little bit out of control. So what I did was I um, took a crumbled up sheet of paper or even you could take like a napkin or something like that. And then you can kind of have a little bit more control with your spill. We don't want a lot of spill on our page. So I'm actually gonna leave just this amount right here and I'm gonna let that dry and I'll check back in after this spill has dried. You can see that my spill is beginning to dry. One thing that's really important is making sure that the spill completely dries all the way. If it's only partially dry, then um, the pen or the writing utensil might rip up the paper. The other thought that I had is, um, that I wanted to highlight is I'm actually using an art paper, which is a little bit thicker than normal paper. Um, and so that can affect um, how your coffee dries on the paper. It can work on um, normal copy paper, but what you would want to do is maybe have a little bit less liquid poured on your paper. So the next step, once your uh, liquid or coffee has dried, is to imagine what it can become. So when I look at this, um, one port important thing about imagining what your spill could become is even turning it in different angles and seeing what it looks like on all sides. I actually, when I face it this way, I kind of see something that reminds me a little bit of, if you've seen Star Wars, um, like a, a hut creature, like Jabba the Hutt. Um, so we could have like a small kind of head up here, maybe some arms, and then kind of like a big kind of curly body. So that's what I'm going to go with today. Um, so it's really important to remember that we need to let the spill, the shape of the spill, dictate how our drawing is going to look. Um, so don't try to fit the spill into what you want to draw, but instead try to fit your drawing into what you see on the spill. Um, so it's important, like I said, to make sure that everything's dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of begin with this area, which I'm going to kind of make into the, the head of the creature. I like to move my pin and let it kind of move a little bit freely with this type of drawing. I'm not worried about imperfections or things like that. I'm gonna actually add in a few kind of eyeballs there. One of the great things about drawing monsters is they could look any type of way that you want. Maybe I'll even add, because we have this space here, maybe a third eye, okay. So I'm beginning to have the shape of the face of the creature. I could even go in and begin to create the mouth of my creature. Could add a few teeth. 
It looks more monstrous if it only has a few teeth, right? Could even add some like fang type teeth if you wanted to. Um, so I'm going to begin to kind of extend the body down and I kind of want this kind of rolled style body. I can even add some shadows if I want to. And then I'm gonna have these little spills that come out kind of almost form a little hand. So maybe like a big thumb there. And again, remember these are monsters so they can look however you want them to. So I kind of like this idea of having some really short stubby little hands. And we're going to continue with the body. Kind of move my pin a little too fast there, but that's okay. And I'm letting the shape of the spill dictate where my pin goes. And I can even kind of extend the tail just a little bit here. I have almost like a, a tail-like end to my creature. And so what I'm going to do is imagine that it's kind of curling. Almost like a curling body like this. sort of like this and we can add some shadows. To our creature. And again, I'm working a little faster than you will probably work on this project. Okay, and so that's kind of giving me the overall shape of the body. It's okay that I have some of the spill over here on the outside. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow to the bottom. And this probably would look a little nice if I was working with Sharpie on the shadows. Something you could think about adding. And then I'm even going to add a little bit of a drop shadow outside of the creature. And if I was working with pencil, I would kind of blend this. And there we're able to kind of turn our spill into a fun little monster. I could go in and add, you know, all sorts of like little things, like if I wanted to add almost like freckle type um, marks on the body, if I wanted to add hair or antennas or horns or all sorts of things, um, you know, it's with a monster, it can be anything that you want it to be.